Welcome, fans, and thank you for joining us on the Reject Runner podcast. This episode is Just Us Rejects. Let's talk about it. Taffy Apple. Now, here's a sweet but crunchy news, just like an apple that's dipped in caramel and sprinkled with a lot of nuts. Uh, Director RJ, say what's up to the fans, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't help myself. This is still a PG show, people. (laughs) PG-13, apparently, (laughs) And the sad part is, I'm the one that wrote that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Hi, everybody, I'm Director RJ. (laughs) I'm just like, I'm just like Ron Burgundy, just reading what's on the, on the, (laughs) on the screen. (laughs) Oh, Lord. I should put a question mark on there, you're going to be like, what? (laughs) Well, fans, thank you guys. We got a heck of a cool show. We got some topics, of course, to talk about. Now, first things on the board: Super Mario was announced recently. That's coming out in 2022. The anime version being made by Illumination, of course, you guys. Now, we also just got the casting call for all those who would be part of this project. Chris Pat is said to be playing Mario, voicing Mario. I would say, I would have to say. Sorry, apologize. Anaya Taylor Joy as Peach, Charlie Day as Luigi, Jack Black as Bowser, gonna be pretty interesting. Uh, Keegan Michael Key, of course, as Toad. That's gonna be funny. I don't know why. I just feel like that's gonna be hilarious. Uh, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. <laughs> that fits him well. <laughs> I can already hear the laugh. Uh, Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong. Kevin Michael Richardson as K- was it Kamek? I think that's pronounced it that way. Kamek? Kamek? I don't know. Sebastian Manosakaloko is Spike. So, uh, excuse my name butchering, but you all know Tony the Kid sucks at pronouncing names. If it wasn't simple enough, then sorry, your name is going to be down to shit. Just put it that way. I apologize. It's going to go down. So, if it's not simple like a, a Anaya or a Chris or a Keegan, something that I can pronounce and understand what it is, I'm not going to say it correctly. Just letting you know. So don't ever get mad at me for that. I'm telling you right now. But Director RJ, what do you feel about the casting call, man? Who, who do you uh, who do you like the most? Well, first, I'm actually happy you're not the one reading the list at the at the like, roll call at the movie <laughs> thing mm-hmm. when you do readings. Like, all right. I agree. Where's Balaki at? <laughs> Where's Balaki at? Balaki! Balaki! Hey, hey, Ron. It's Where- Blake. Where's where's A.A. Ron? Shaquia? Shaquia? D-Nice. Is D-Nice in the house? <laughs> oh, man. That was, that's one of the best episodes of skits they did on freaking Keegan, Key and Peele. Great ones. Still go down as the best. But go ahead. So, looking at this list and the characters that are uh, apparently in this film, mm-hmm. uh, dude... Is it me, or since Sonic came out animation, mm-hmm. um, they showed uh, animated style of uh, Pokemon, but yes. not like computer animated stuff. You know, it wasn't animated cartoon, but computer animated one. Correct. And now uh, Mario seems to be the same thing. Mario's not going to be human. He's going to be like computer animated. Right. I think we're actually heading toward a Smash Brothers universe. I would not be mad, my friend. You already know our past on Super Mario Smash Brothers. You know how we get down on the Nintendo GameCube and all that other stuff? It goes hardcore. I would love, I would love for this to happen. And the one crazy part, Director RJ, is that they're working under the scene. There's no leaks. There's no discussion. There's no in the works crap. There's no development crap. It's the fact that you're making these movies solo first and you're keeping everything on the hush hush and basically saying, let's make these movies. Let's see how they go. But we're designing these movies in the way, like how you're stating that animation part is correct. Like you cannot tell me that that Pikachu cannot cross over and jump onto a a freaking Sonic movie. You are not telling me that they could not jump over and come on board to a Mario movie. It doesn't make sense to me. Now, the only way I think would help with this is that in the Link movie, if they were to make Zelda movie like that, I feel like that's where 
you would basically helm as the person gathering everybody. You know what I mean? Because it's magical. Uh, it's about magical powers, and they take they take Link. Uh, I mean, they take Zelda and they capture her. So who's gonna develop this team that needs to be on board with that? When they got those guys over there, like, dude, you got you can definitely add, you know, Helm as Zelda being that it person of gathering ever, going from portal to portal and gathering everyone. Yes, Sonic can do it too with his little rings. He can go from universe to universe. But to gather everyone, he would be that one person I would helm that that storyline to. You know what I mean? And at that, you can get people from Star Fox on board. You got what's what's that other one with the girl uh, character where she's shooting out a, a bullet or something like that or whatever in her hand? I forgot her name. I forgot her name too, but she's very popular. Yeah, she balls up like a ball and stuff like that or whatever. So, but anywho, but that'll be cool. What do you think? To, to see that come to life, you know, and then if we get Kirby to pop out and mm-hmm. uh, Solid Snake later on, of course, like, as the games continue to develop, I believe some of the characters that will be in these games will be human-like, like, uh, of course, Sonic Snake might be human-like, Right. and I wouldn't mind watching, they've been announcing Metal Gear Solid as Solid for such a long time, Right. now with this being in development, I, you know, it'd be cool to see who, what actor they get for Metal Gear Solid. Right. Exactly. And the Mario Brothers movie, well, I think this will be based on probably the first one, and if Donkey Kong's in it, um, I'm trying to see where, how does this play out, because um, I'm not sure what this is going to be based on. That's true. Other than probably part one, the video game, but, you know, I mean, you have two different part ones. You have Mario versus Donkey Kong in part one. Mm-hmm. You have Mario versus King Koopa, which is now Bowser in part one. Yes, exactly. Oh, Samus. That's the that's the female I'm talking about. Samus. Oh, Samus. Samus. So yes. So the characters you got is the main characters. I'm reading like a board right now, of sort. So you definitely got Sonic. You got Pokemon people on board. You got the Donkey Kong crew. Snake from Metal Gear Solid. That's one you're talking about. You got also some of these uh, like Meta Knight, Pit, someone from anime stuff, whatever. Roy. You got who else? Yeah, characters from Zelda. Like I said, Star Fox. You got Falco. Dr. Mario, things like that in that nature, you guys. Captain Falcon from their little his little racing game that they put out there, who's a humanoid, like you were talking about. Um mm-hmm. who else was the other person? Oh, they even in one of the DSL packs, they just put on board Tekken guy, Kaza, Kaza Kazuya. So like oh, okay. yeah, they put him on board, so that's pretty crazy. You got who else you got on there? Little Mac, I don't know, that boxing dude from um Punch out, they put him on there. That'd be pretty cool. Then you got Bowser Jr., Street Fighter guys, you got Ken. Like you got a bunch of people that they could put on there. A bunch of people they could put in works. Mega Man. Mega I no lie, if they do oh, Mega Man Mega Man. Mega Man is the one guy that I've been saying from day one. When they started doing these animation movies, he's been my guy from day one that I've been wanting to see on the screen because he was the coolest cartoon that I ever watched and just the coolest game that I ever played solo and be able to beat by myself without anybody giving me cheat codes and all that type of stuff. He was that guy. That was that freaking, you know, video game. So, yeah, I would love to see that. You know who I would also like to... I wonder who would voice Mega Man if... Well, either if Mega Man is a cart- like animated version or if he's uh, going to be... Has to be uh, non-animated. Yeah. If he's like non-animated, I would like to see what actor they get. Um, there's so many good actors that could play Mega Man at this moment. Like you have Zac Efron, you have uh, what's it called? Like dude from the Jonas Brothers. You have that one guy who came out and with the Rock. I forgot his name, but he came out with the Rock in uh, Which uh one? I forget. It's a sequel to the movie that he did with Brendan Fraser, where oh, Journey to the Center of the Earth Part Two. Yeah. Okay, I understand. The character he's also played in um, Hunger Games. He was uh, he played uh, in there too as well. So yeah, I get you. I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. And I mean, you have so many possibilities for casting a Mega Man. And Zach Efron. Mega Man is very popular. I'm dubbing Zach Efron already. I'm already doing it now. Just doing it now. I'm, I'm dubbing him. <laughs> you're going with Zach Efron for yep. the role. I already know. If you just gave me that list right now, and what to pick, Zach Efron all the way, definitely. 
definitely, definitely. I, agree. Definitely. I mean, voice acting and non voice acting, I think Zach Efron would be perfect for Mega Man. Yes, yes, he would. Thank you. Please make it happen, guys. Make it happen, Nintendo. Nintendo, I need a Mega Man movie. Please, please. <laughs> this is, like, he would be dope. Like, come on. You like you can't imagine the graphics that come on board with him charging up his blaster. It'd be via snow, oh. you know, boomerang. Like just just him gathering that power and the absorption and everything. Come on, man! The graphics would look freaking awesome. The kids would go berserk. The people would love it. Like us geeks, like we would be freaking falling in love with that freaking movie. It would be dope. And if you get. And if you get some of the anime creations and stuff like that over there in Japan that's done anime work, um, and get them on board with some of that stuff, like, come on, dude. Like, that would be even better. Like, they just would know some of the stuff. Just the design of it would be crisp. Woo! I'm excited. I'm excited. <sighs> and then imagine all the people that are going to be cosplaying these guys soon. I mean, Thank I, you. I'm going to break out my Luigi cosplay, and I hope G-Money and you guys, you know, let's all go as the Smash Brothers for the first Mario movie. I know, I got to go as, what was it, Waluigi? Waluigi. Waluigi Which again. Which is very weird, because I'm Luigi and you're Waluigi, and Waluigi is actually taller than Luigi. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I'm... just say I eat the mushroom, and that's why I'm tall. There you go. That makes sense. I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be... <laughs> It's gonna be really interesting. Uh, I love, I love what they're doing. If there is this is is the ideal end plate, you know what I mean, like the ideal end game for this. Um, I would, I would definitely be on board with this type of scenario. This is great. This is going good. So far, going good. I mean, one thing is that a lot of those characters, though, Director RJ, we could both agree that a lot of those characters can and deserve their own solo film already. So mm-hmm. w- either will they do it before? The Smash Brothers things or do it after it's all you know it's all relative because regardless it it's gonna be a good movie say the least and at least they got their key key characters out there on board with their movies and now just gathering everybody in that's gonna be easy work be done to be honest because it's more cartoonish than it is of a storyline of a people thing like like you know Cop Marvel and like DC stuff they're more real life situations at least here cartoonish video game-ish and they could just jump from one end pick them up like you know something like that in, in a funny goofy way so it's not bad I, i'm okay with this i'm okay with this for sure so so move yeah, on to the next question I you agree. guys next question director rj we gotta get off board before we start giving them ideas we want them to come to us for the ideas so stop before we can do that uh <laughs> Next question. We're going to focus on Batman anyway. That's right. Original Blade movie fans not happy with the fact that Spider-Man and X-Men are getting the most credit for starting the MCU, which is baloney. I'm going to start this off with Crick Durant, RJ. I am... I, I would agree with that aspect. I would agree why you would be pissed off. It is not because of X-Men. Even at that, X-Men wasn't even that great of a movie, in my opinion. If I compare between the Blade movie and the X-Men movie, I would pick Blade. A hundred times. A hundred times. That X-Men movie sucked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say. Yes, it gave us great characters. But the whole idea of the movie in general, the plot, the story to it, sucked. Okay? It sucked. As far as Spider Man is concerned, uh, look, I I'm okay. I'm Tom McGuire is not my favorite Spider Man, nor will he ever be. My favorite one is gonna be Andrew Garfield. Okay, I I it's just the story behind it that is okay for what it was when it came out. I'm glad that it made sense to be in a Spider Man movie. I'm glad it gave us Green Goblin. You know, that that was also, in comparison, just as equal as Blade, okay? I can't say it was better. I still would prefer Blade. But, again, it's just as good. It's definitely better than X-Men, but it's just as good. So if I were to say who started off the most had to have been Spider-Man, that gave you the hype, that also, Blade, that gave you the badass hype, that wanted us to see those badass characters put out there. When Blade came out, a lot of people want to see a Punisher. A lot of people want to see these real life, you know, dark dark nights type of thing for the Marvel franchise to be put on the big screen. 
because it gave us realism. It gave us action. It gave us badassness. It gave us these characters in a way that was given to us as a gimmick in a cartoon or in a, in a uh, comic book as well. That set us off Jump Street. And when you think of Blade and all these years that's came out with, you think of Wesley Snipes putting the freaking leather jacket on, showing the vampire teeth, and smiling because he's killing some freaking vampires in a badass way. There's no other vision you can see of that. Now, Muhammad's going to be coming up with the new Blade very up soon, and I'm going to be excited to see him portray that character. I even think he'll be the next Dubshin to helm the Blade character and go forward. But, again, fans, you cannot be telling me that X-Men and Spider-Man is what started off the franchise of the MCU. You cannot tell me that it was because of them that's overshadowing this black actor, this black character, saying that he did not do something to start it off. Because if it wasn't for that movie's success, there was no company out there that was buying up comic books so that way they can get their hands on owning their rights to a comic book character in order to see what they can do to be successful. It, he was the starting point. If it wasn't for his success, then the rest of these guys would never be thought of. Nobody else would want to buy a comic book for to make a movie. It would never make sense. So, Director RJ, say your piece. It's okay. I'm going to pull up a SG3 card here. You know how like they call it the trump card? I forgot what the meaning of that is. But mm-hmm. I'm going to pull off the SG3 card where I play both sides of the field. Uh, one, I agree. Uh, play fans... Uh, when it came out, you know, you didn't have nothing afterwards. The only movie that you had was from DC Comics, which was a dying breed at that moment when Batman and Robin came out. Right. And we were like, no more, <clears throat> no more. We need something good. Right. And what happens? We get Blade. Uh, most of us, now here's where I play the Marvel, uh, the Marvel side of the other thing, you know, Marvel fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, the non, like, non-Blade fans. Uh, Spider-Man and X-Men argument. Um, Blade, I didn't know Blade was part of Marvel until I saw him in the Spider-Man cartoons, which was during the 90s, you know, and he came out in, uh, I believe he came out in one of the Spider-Man episodes. So I started getting more familiar with Blade because of that. So I think the problem here is a lot of people are giving credit to Spider-Man and X-Men because they weren't, probably not had knowledge toward Blade at all, mm-hmm. if you catch what I'm saying. Right. So, to me, uh, I believe that in order for everyone to, like, think of it, it's, I would lean more toward Blade should get credit because of the fact that if it wasn't for Blade, like you stated a while ago, if it wasn't for Blade coming out, uh, putting a film the way they did, right. making it close to the comics as possible, mm-hmm. We wouldn't be re, you know, and the biggest part of it all is that the villain they had for Blade isn't even a big villain at all in the comics. Right. He's not, if you look it up, he's actually a, like a one time show and that's it. Yeah. So with uh, Blade, or probably he is a big deal, I'm not too sure. I gotta look it up again. But with Blade coming out, doing all he did in part one and getting the, you know, the fandom that he got, it, opened up everyone's eyes saying, okay, now, they, like you said, now we got Blade, what's next? Yes. And soon we started getting Spider-Man, X-Men, and after Spider-Man and X-Men, Disney like, okay, we saw Spider-Man, we saw X-Men, we saw another Blade, uh, now let's jump in here. Mm-hmm. So, if it wasn't for Blade jumping in there and doing what they did, uh, we wouldn't have gotten fans' interest on Spider-Man and X-Men. I, right. I mean, we still would have. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it's Spider-Man and X-Men. Yes. But um, a deal and the concept of, you know, comic book movies could survive. Started with, uh, well, I can't really argue that with either because when Superman came out, that was already a comic book movie. Yeah. So let's just put it this way. A comic book movies could continue came because of Blade. Yes, that they could be dark and like within the comic realm, and people will like it. Came because of Blade, right? Yeah, and that's I, all. That's my opinion. Well, yes, I agree, and I, that's my thing. If I'm not mistaken, 
because the movie was re- released in 1998. If I'm not mistaken, that an- Spider-Man animated series was running way before the 98 series. If I if I'm looking mm-hmm. at if I'm looking at um, the Spider-Man in general animation, the one that came out where we fell in love with, uh, it came out before that. 1992, oh. I think. Yeah, I'm looking at it right here. Let's see. First episode date, 1994. So, 94? You have to imagine that Blake character definitely came out in 95, maybe the following season or 96, okay? Because I don't think it only had maybe three seasons worth of cartoons in general for that franchise. So, you got to look at it. With that series being done, it doesn't... It started off with them there. But yes, I agree that fans didn't know too much of Blade going forward and that you didn't know that that was a Marvel character. I myself knew just because I was a big fan to a Spider-Man franchise cartoon at that moment. That was one of my favorite cartoons to watch. And seeing Blade on there was even cooler because they dealt with, you know, the vampire scenario. Like it wasn't a Dracula little thing. It was this character who obviously was a Marvel character. Then all of a sudden, Mor- Morbius, they came on board and thus highlighted a series of maybe a three-part type of section pertaining to this these two characters. So when the Blade movie came out, I already knew in my back of my mind that that was from it, where it came from. So I was excited to know that this was a Marvel thing and the fact that they were making this so like horror film-like, it was even cooler. Because it just set it up to where, all right, man, this is cool. This is a cartoon. Now we get the movie, and now they're going to give us a reimagined vision, and they make it like this. Even better. So, I agree. I get what you mean on the sense of a lot of people probably didn't know. And when you look at it, especially back then, they didn't do the Marvel uh, logo like they do going forward with all these movies in the front, in the beginning. They didn't do a Marvel one like that. They did a Marvel one at the end of the film when they were showing the post credits. You didn't see that Marvel stamp on it until you would have saw all the credits went by and said this is a Marvel production or associated yeah, with so. Marvel. So yes, I agree with you on that. And the worst part is that the sequel, if they would have targeted Morbius, like you've mentioned before. Yes. Then people would have been like Morbius. Oh, he's in Spider-Man cartoons. Right. They would have connected it. Right. They knew, like for some reason, this company couldn't get the rights to Morbius or something, and that's why they couldn't do the sequel that we wanted. Right. Or else, man, we would have been on Morbius against Blade, and we would have been like, oh, so Spider-Man's coming out soon. No, I agree, and that's the thing. I agree. If it, in my mind, it was, I think at that time frame, it, it started off. Okay, let's put it this way. It lit the match. In, in the flame full, you know, lit the match to begin this big bonfire flame. Okay? It started it off. But in, but after success to it, that's where it failed. Because one, the company itself, Marvel, did not do the backing to this character and highlight the fact that this is our character. This is part of us, you guys. We're glad that you enjoy it. We're glad that you love it. Now let's feed into it. They didn't give it that respect. In my mind, I don't think they gave it that respect and I don't think they, you know, catered to it like they should or even to this day. Like, why not cater to it? Why not understand that if it wasn't for that movie, the rest of your franchises wouldn't be even a thought process. A lot of people didn't want to jump on board. Okay, and if it wasn't because the main movies that I think that impacted the Marvel Universe. Really, that started everything definitely was Blade that lit the match. I, Spider-Man was the the freaking lighter fluid that put on the wood, and you all, all of a sudden you had it right there, all right? You had it set up really good. And then once you came out with Iron Man, that inflamed everything. That lit the whole thing up to a high freaking skyscraper type. You can see it from there because you can definitely see the future vision after that success of Iron Man. To know that this was going to be bigger than we thought. And that's where my thing is. The key to the Marvel success was because of those three films. There was nothing else in between. X-Men barely did it. 
at one point you can sit there and say that if even X-Men was kind of losing the taste for Marvel movies, definitely Fantastic Four wasn't all that great, even though they tried putting, giving us out there. Fantastic Four was basically like, you know, this cheap wood that you bought, you put it in the fire, it lit up really nice, but then all of a sudden it died real fast, within seconds. So that's that's my key to that. And all of a sudden, you know, same thing. You get those movies, it just didn't go well. But when, it, it was just those three movies that started off. So that's my take to it. That's my take to it. But I'm glad and I wish that Marvel can, to this day, finally jump on board, man. Get Get the idea right. If it wasn't for that movie... It just wouldn't go nowhere at all. So, whoo! You gave me a good topic. You gave me a good topic, Dark RJ. I like it. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> Another. Now, on to the next question, you guys. Real fast and easy. This is simple. News that came on board. Scarlett Johansson and Disney finally settle their settlement. Dr. RJ, split out the little news and spews pertaining to the situation. So, from what I read, is that Scarlett Johansson, uh, she was over $50 million, uh, for her um, movie, mm-hmm. but she got uh, $40 million instead. Mm-hmm. She got $40 million instead, and plus she got, uh, so she didn't get the full amount of money she was supposed to get. Yeah. So, basically, what's so the whole guess, reason? Uh, Go ahead. So I'm guessing in one way or another, you know, she got something out of nothing, but um, both arguments still stay in the same place. Yeah. Where, uh, you know, she should have gotten more, but it was during COVID time, and we're, we were just barely getting out of COVID. So, you know, we're still fighting it as it is now. Right. I agree. And I think the reason why I feel like they just needed to settle it, because one is just going to cost, cost more money, and at that, Johansson... I mean, I give her the credit for making a statement. It wasn't, I don't think she, I think she already knew in the sense of saying, I'm not going to win because I'm going against Marvel. Their company is going to come at me with everything they got. They got untapped resources. I myself am not on that level just yet. But yes, I do have some resources that will at least put my name out there and at least make a statement. So by her, you know, laying down the lawsuit, it just sets it up to where she made a statement for all actors and actresses to finally say, like, listen, when things don't go right with that company or anything like that, for whatever reason, they didn't put something in the contract that they were supposed to or promised. You have the right to step up for yourself and go against them. So this was her right. What she did was make that statement. A lot of people started following suit. They understood the circumstance. And I'm sure going forward. This isn't the last time we're going to see somebody sue the company for whatever they promised pertaining to the distribution of their movie. So I get why she did it because, you know, they they basically promised her a the, theatrical release than just saying we're going to put it streaming service. Now get me on this. I get fans. I get fans in this circumstance want to have an in-house movie. But I also understand that the depths of the reason the movie theaters were put there were to put these type of movies on the big screen, the landscape of showing the world what these companies come up with in order for our entertainment. And for any movie of the Marvel franchise that came on board that deserved a solo film, Black Widow's been yelling that one out since the Jump Street of Avengers. Even before then. No, actually after. Okay, after, after. I'll put it that way. A little bit after the Avengers movie, they everyone's been wishing for the whole Black Widow movie. Just by seeing her come out in, you know, uh, the Avengers, everyone was excited. So, that being said, this would have been intact being the best. I probably would have in depth made a dent into the franchise. But, again, things happen and they basically kind of cut her short and put her from theater to Disney Plus and... They went from there. So I get why and understand it. <sighs> but I'm happy that both settle it and they just can move on. So that way we can keep getting these franchises. Because I know Marvel in general don't want to be keeping their butts in the courtroom when they got another lawsuit coming forward uh, pertaining to the rights of the characters in the first place. So that's another reason why I'm sure they wanted to settle this one out real quick. So, Dr. RJ, anything to chime in on that? 
Um, I agree with everything you said. I think uh, one to me, you know, if you look at the difference between like HBO Max and Disney, of course, Disney is not touching much of a big price for their movies, but HBO Max is. I mean, HBO Max isn't pushing a big price for their movies. So HBO Max isn't pushing a big price on their movies. If you look at it, that's why they're, you know, they kind of like uh, Disney's argument doesn't really help out Disney much either. Because mm-hmm. if HBO Max could release these movies nearly for free, they're only charging you, uh, what, $15 in total for a showing? Mm-hmm. And that's actually if you have the entire app, so you're not paying extra money. Right. Disney, on their hand, is like, oh, we're going to release this movie out here, but you're going to pay us $30 to watch it at home. Right. So for Disney to come up and tell Scarlett Johansson that she's being selfish, that's kind of like, you know, uh, being hypocritical in a way. Because exactly. if HBO Max is releasing all these movies for free, Kong against Godzilla, that could have gotten so much money at the movie theater. Exactly. Uh, just as he just signed the <clears throat> Snyder Cut, you know, that could have gotten a lot of money at the theater. Mm-hmm. If HBO Max could do that and giving people something to watch while they're struggling with the COVID thing, then Disney should have been able to do the same thing. Just bump your, your price a little bit more instead of saying that we're $6.99 or something and uh, put it up to $10, you know? Right. Exactly. So, yeah, that's why, you know, Scarlett Johansson has the right to sue and Disney's argument is pretty much in my mind invalid. Yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. So it's just, uh, it's just good that they settlement. They did the settlement. They got out of the courtroom, and finally they can move on for both each other's franchises. I think with Black, you know, with Scarlett Johansson, I don't see her being dubbed in Disney projects anytime soon, nor any superhero projects. Even though I wish, and it'd be cool, like you, like we talked about before, about her joining the Team T franchise. But it may be some time before she kind of steps away, you know, steps into another light. Uh, of this caliber and right now i can see her doing projects like a netflix stuff you know hbo stuff you know things like that in that nature doing those projects i think she's kind of had in mind over the years that i think would be even bet like good for her character like I, I before she jumped on board she was a great she was in great projects like this one movie um if you guys ever saw he's just he's just not that into you she played his ditzy uh f- female who who was you know attracted to a man that she couldn't get because he was married but messing with the man that she knew she wasn't really attracted to but because he was there she was going after him you know just her quirkiness in there her acting in general in the movie was good and that movie was just all based on different you know characters uh big name characters that were kind of in the midst of their own life and all of a sudden everyone was connected one way shape or form at the end of the movie so it's one of those movies and it was good she played a good role so going forward i think she can find roles like this that even be better entertainment for people so you know ghost in the shell she did well lucy she did well so things like that i think she wants to dive into a little bit more and i'm cool with that i'm cool with that so i'm happy to see that finally end yeah same i agree I'm happy she's uh, trying to get back to, like, outside of the superhero genre and do more dramatic or more comedy romantic movies. Exactly. All right, Director RJ, that's all I got on board. Uh, any final thoughts from your end? <laughs> um, remember, taffy apples are very good and delicious. Make sure to get some while they're out the store right now. <laughs> you know how to make them. Good for you. Make them. I know, right? Uh, there's one cool thing, you guys. Look up any of your, like, around the area. If you're around the area, go to your uh, closest farm industry right cool. now. And that way they have some really good apple farms out. There is one close by where we live in Wisconsin. I have a lot of apple picking there. I'm definitely taking my family and kids out either this weekend, if not next weekend, for sure. But it's going to be fun, to say the least. I used to do that as a kid, and it's uh, good for everybody. Good for everybody. Good practice, good love, good time. Uh, in the kitchen with the family. So be cool. But like Director Ari said, make sure you catch your re- Laffy Taffy or Taffy Apples anywhere in your nearest grocery store because they are hot on demand right now since it's that time of season. So other than that, thank you guys for joining us in the Reject Run Now podcast on this episode of Let's Talk About It, Taffy Apple. You definitely can find us on rejectrundown.com, in the Instagram, Twitter, got a little blank for it, Facebook. 
and any of those little things that you guys want to look us up for, we're definitely on board. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, you name it, we're out there. So continue with the support. Appreciate it. Love you guys. And y'all have a good night.